Yeah, so here I have a, I think it's a 17 inch chimney. I might even be a 19 inch monitor um, with a bit of a problem. I've repaired a couple of these in the past and I, I think it might be something along the same lines as the other ones that I've repaired, but um, it simply doesn't switch on. Not a it tries to, but um, you get a bit of craziness happening. To me, it sounds like it's trying to fire up the uh, backlight, which is um, probably a compact fluorescent, and it's yeah, obviously giving up. So, in the monitors I've repaired in the past, the basically the, the FETs seem to um, die. They either die or bad solder joints. Eventually, they they. They die, so we'll crack it open. We'll have a bit of a look at what's going on inside this one. So once you've uh, run around all the edges here, unclip the plastic, it should pop off. And there we go, getting a little bit closer. So now that it's open, we've got a good good look at the power supply. You can see there's the um, transformers for the high voltage compact fluorescent. They must be the FETs, little SO8 components. Um, guessing they're I'm not sure what they're there for. Um, power supply switch mode. There's your high voltage section. Very obvious um, that some of these caps have gone bad. You can see they're bulging there. Um, I'll zoom in. Hopefully you can pick it up. Yeah, so at least yeah, at least maybe half a dozen caps there that have just gone bad. That one's clearly bulged. So um, I think it'll just be a case of pulling these out. Uh, measuring them on the um, LCR meter and uh, probably replacing them all. And maybe that's enough to get us across the line. So let's let's uh, go down that route. Okay, so you know you always have to be super careful with these um, high voltage caps. Um, that that guy's rated 400 volts. There could potentially still be some uh, high voltage on there. So it's going to treat it carefully, and I'll put the meter on there and see what's. Uh, See if there's any energy on it. Ah, so it's next to nothing on that, only 10 volts, so should be right. Can move forward. I actually find it helps to to add solder to these joints to get the caps out. Just any old solder joint can be a little bit of... Still a tiny bit of charge on that guy. There we go. That's one. You might prefer a solder sucker tool, but I'm not a big fan of them. Um, there we go, there's another one. Caps on. Sounds like a high quality uh, capacitor manufacturer, that one. Now you may have come across these before. Um, it's a very, very simple LCR meter. You can buy on eBay for about five bucks. Um, yeah, I've loaded my cap in there. Just see if it'll uh, 
read the capacitance and um, it'll give you the ESR and all sorts of info. Doesn't usually take too long. So it could be this, this part's really cactus. Yeah, so I haven't, don't normally see that with a cap, so I'll stick a, a known good cap in. So, that's a good cap. Now I'm just going to measure DC resistance. That doesn't look too bad. Um, got a massive bulge in the top, so I think that's good enough for me to, to replace it. Um, let's try the other one. Okay, so nearly two microfarads, and you can see that's a uh, 220 microfarad. So well and truly stuffed. So look, I'll um, I think this is a precaution. I'll go through the whole board and replace all the all the caps, all the electrolytics, and put it back together, and we'll see what happens. So some of these caps, I, I might just up the voltage, um, basically because that's that's all I've got. So can't do any harm. That's one down. Okay, you can see uh, the caps that I swapped out. I actually upped the voltages because, um, well, that was all I had um, in my drawers. So it's a little bit ugly, but I think it it, it can't can't hurt. These are, these are high quality caps. Um, check the clearance. This guy should be all right. It's a little bit taller. Um, just these other two large caps I've just got hanging. Off, uh, off, off some longer leads. I've insulated them, so um, that should be all right. So um, I think that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll just double check. I've got them all the right way around. Put it back together, and um, you yeah, will fire it up. I think I'll probably power it up um, without the cover on it just to see if we get some obvious um, destruction or a bit more of a positive um, positive sign. Uh, 
there, so just plug that in. Uh, so it looks a bit more promising. You can see the, the backlighting around the edges there, but it seems to be going to sleep. Those transformers, um, they make a bit of noise, but um, I certainly don't think that's abnormal. So, yeah, let's uh, let's screw it all back together and, and try connecting it up to one of the, the PCs. Interesting to see this is actually from 2006, so I think it's done quite well really. Um, that's, a, that's a fair effort. I know uh, the owner of this monitor has it on standby all the time, so I'm surprised it's made it this far actually, but um, you know, you might be wondering why I'm actually fixing it, why bother it's such an old monitor anyway, but um, they're, actually, they're actually pretty good screens, so instead of sending it to landfill, at least the um, the owner of this monitor can get at least a few more years out of it, and um, it's good for the environment. It's good for uh, good for everyone involved. So um, yeah, I really really hope that that helps. If uh, if you're having a similar problem and um, want to go down the path of repairing your own uh, your own gear, okay, so it's hooked up to a era appropriate PC we'll just see if uh, we get a good picture so far so good nice clear bright picture